Today, let's talk about the mysterious death of a 15-year-old Hong Kong student whose body was found floating in the sea near Yao Tong, Hong Kong, in 2019. The case attracted significant media attention and sparked various conspiracy theories, partly due to the political climate in Hong Kong at the time, with ongoing protests against the government. Initial police investigations pointed to drowning, but with no definitive cause of death. The context of the protests led to speculation about possible foul play or a cover-up, although evidence indicated mental health struggles. Despite extensive investigations and public interest, the exact circumstances of her death remain unclear to this day. Let's get right into the mysterious death of Chan Yin Lam. In 2019, the death of Chan Yin Lam really stood out as a symbol of the police's harsh treatment of protesters in Hong Kong. Her death was not only suspicious, but also remains a mystery since the true cause hasn't been definitively determined. This whole situation began with the 2019 Hong Kong protests. The 2019 Hong Kong protests started mainly because the government introduced the Fugitive Offenders Amendment Bill, a law that would allow people to be sent to mainland China for trial. People in Hong Kong were worried this law would undermine the one country, two systems principle and let China have too much control. They were also upset about how the police treated protesters. This was a major movement following the 2014 Umbrella Movement, yet the government still considered it a riot. The Hong Kong police faced criticism for what many saw as an abuse of power and excessive force, not sticking to local and international safety standards. There were reports of protesters being hit by rubber bullets and beanbag rounds used by the police. There were also claims that the police misused hazardous expired tear gas, using it in confined spaces like train stations, and employed it as an offensive weapon. Even people who weren't actively protesting ended up being affected by these actions. On August 10th, 2019, Chan Yin Lam, just 15 years old, was unexpectedly caught in the chaos of the Hong Kong protests. She was out shopping when she found herself amid the police's tear gas deployment. Overwhelmed, she recorded a video on her phone, visibly distressed, choking, and with tears in her eyes. In the video, she expressed confusion about why she was targeted, claiming that she wasn't part of the protests. This video, showing her puffy-eyed and in distress, was uploaded to her social media. Before we get into her disappearance, let's talk a little bit more about her background. Chan Yin Lam's life in Hong Kong was complex. According to her friends, she mainly lived with her grandparents because of her parents' divorce. It wasn't unusual for her to run away from home, occasionally ending up at a shelter for runaways. Despite these challenges, Chen was determined to make the most of her life. She worked as a waiter in the catering industry during the summer, earning money and keeping a positive attitude. On social media, she expressed a desire to leave her difficult past behind and focus on happiness. At school, Chen was known as a cheerful and intelligent girl. She was enrolled in Pok Oi Hospital, Tang Pui King Memorial College, popular among her classmates and active in her studies. She attended courses at the VTC Youth Academy, including design classes. Notably, she had won a swimming competition, a fact that later became significant in her case. Behind her outwardly positive demeanor, Chan Yin Lam was struggling with significant mental health issues. In March 2019, she was admitted to Twin Moon Hospital after an incident where she attempted to suffocate herself with a plastic bag. 
A psychiatrist assessment revealed that Chan was experiencing auditory hallucinations, not sleeping well, and dealing with considerable stress. She was prescribed medications, including sedatives, but it's unclear if she consistently took them. Chan's mental health condition was eventually diagnosed as an early form of psychosis disorder. Psychosis is a state in which an individual has difficulty distinguishing what is real from what isn't, and it can also cause involuntary body movements. Chan expressed to her doctor that she didn't have any intention of harming herself, suggesting that her actions might have been influenced by her mental state. It was speculated that Chan might have inherited her psychosis tendencies from her father, who also reportedly suffered from a similar disorder. In the period leading up to her disappearance, Chan was understood to have supported the anti-extradition bill movement. Contrary to earlier statements, it was later acknowledged by her friends that she was actively participating in the protests. But she was not involved in more violent frontline activities against police authorities. Chan was a protester, but she wasn't among those who faced arrests or direct confrontations with the police. So there was no reason for the police to target Chan. But the situation took a dramatic turn when a fisherman discovered her body on September 22nd, 2019, near Devil's Peak. The fisherman promptly alerted the authorities, leading to the retrieval of the body, which was soon identified as the 15-year-old Chan Yin Lam, who had been reported missing for several days. Chan was last seen with friends in Meifu on September 19th, where she left early, claiming she wanted to go home and rest. Her friends received a cryptic message from her, stating, that's mean of you guys, which turned out to be the last communication before her disappearance. She didn't show up at her campus, home, or any other known location. In the police investigation, the categorization of her death shifted from a potential murder to simply a dead body found, likely self-inflicted, sparking outrage among her peers. This change led to speculation and accusations of a possible cover-up by the police, especially considering Chan's active involvement in the protest movement. This fueled theories that the police might have had a role in her death, adding to the already tense atmosphere surrounding the Hong Kong protests. The case of Chan Yin Lam intensified when many, including protesters and her classmates, became deeply involved in seeking the truth about her disappearance and death. The Hong Kong Design Institute, where Chan was a student, was pressured to release CCTV footage from September 19, the last day she was seen on campus. Frustrated students demanded the complete, unedited video with a 30-minute deadline. Initially, only portions of the footage were released, leading to vandalism of school property by those demanding full disclosure. Eventually, the institute complied, releasing the entire video. In the footage, Chan is seen wearing loose-fitting striped pants and a black tank top, wandering the campus. She appears somewhat disoriented, but not too distressed. Over the course of more than an hour, she is observed waiting for elevators, walking through a canteen, and exploring an outdoor space on the roof, eventually discarding her shoes and continuing barefoot. Notably, she doesn't interact with anyone or use a phone, and around 7 p.m. she seems to leave the campus. A witness reported seeing her enter a nearby subway station without passing through the ticket barrier, leaving her belongings behind. Additionally, a taxi driver claimed to have driven Chan to a construction site near Lohas Park MTR station later that evening, although this account lacks corroborating evidence. Chan's death has stirred various reactions with opinions divided. Some believe in the police's version of the events, while others suspect foul play, theorizing that she was assaulted and murdered by the police because of her active involvement in the protest movement. The issue of Chan's missing clothes added to the mystery. Her clothing wasn't found near her body or along the shore, which was unusual, especially since she was found completely nude with no underwear attached to her body. 
This detail, coupled with the fact that Chan was a good swimmer, led to public skepticism and anger. Rumors and allegations about potential police sexual assault began to circulate. These claims, which appeared online, suggested without any evidence that police officers might have assaulted Chan, subsequently killing her and disposing of her body in the harbor. This speculation has given rise to numerous conspiracy theories, reflecting the deep divisions and mistrust in the community during this turbulent period. People were concerned that Chan Yin Lam's body was cremated just one day after the police confirmed it was hers, which seemed too quick. Professor Ma Xuan Li pointed out the suspicious nature of this quick cremation and the circumstances of finding Chan's body. Ma also noted that finding a completely nude body in water is usually treated with suspicion and needs a thorough examination. In many self-inflicted cases, there is often a note, but none was found here. If no note is left or the family doesn't request to avoid an autopsy, typically a forensic doctor would conduct one. Ma found it strange that Chen's clothes were never found and thought the police should have looked into this. Contrasting these concerns, some believed Chan might have taken her life because of mental health issues. A classmate described Chan's unusual behavior on her last day, like sleeping on the classroom floor because she couldn't sleep, and was packing things and sitting on the floor of the MTR train despite empty seats. Chan also sent a puzzling message to her friends. This behavior, along with what was seen in the CCTV footage, indicated that she was struggling. The autopsy of Chan Yin Lam, conducted by two forensic pathologists, suggests that she might have drowned given the absence of obvious fatal injuries. The state of decomposition of the body made it difficult to perform a blood test for alcohol, though no drugs or toxins were found. Additionally, no evidence of sexual assault was found in Chan's DNA analysis, with no foreign DNA in her vagina or under her fingernails. But the pathologist noted that these findings were inconclusive as DNA could have been washed away and decomposition was advanced. Many, particularly protesters, doubted the police's narrative that she ended her own life. Chan Yin Lam's mother, Ho Pu Yi, faced public harassment, receiving numerous calls and being subjected to cyberbullying. Her personal information was also leaked. She faced accusations of being an actress or conspiring with the police to hide the truth about her daughter's death, especially since she agreed with the police's conclusion that Chan had taken her own life after a psychotic breakdown. There was public scrutiny over Ho Pu Yi's identity as Chan Yin Lam's mother. During a TV interview, Ho appeared with long hair and wore a surgical mask, but people online doubted her identity, citing older Facebook photos showing Chan's mother with shorter hair. This led to questions about whether it was an old picture or if hair could grow that fast. The jury at Hong Kong's coroner's court could not conclusively determine the cause of Chan Yin Lam's death. Magistrate Ko Wai Hung explained that there was insufficient evidence to confirm whether it was self-inflicted or an unlawful killing. They found no signs of physical struggle or drug influence and couldn't access information from Chan's locked phone. Classmates created a memorial for Chan at her campus, leaving prayers, flowers, and other items in her memory. Among protesters, Chan was viewed as a martyr, unjustly killed by corrupt police, fueling the belief that her death was part of a sinister plot. Despite the police's denial of involvement, the protesters continued to support this conspiracy theory. The case remains complex, with strong arguments on both sides. Chan's mental health issues could point to a psychotic episode, while the lack of clear evidence of murder or struggle adds to the ambiguity. The situation leaves room for various interpretations and ongoing debate about the true nature of her death. What do you think about this case? I'll leave you with that and wrap up today's case. Thanks for watching.